not even a crack. One more time. No, no, that's a lie. Hey! Jesus! Every citizen of every country wants to see their cities among the cleanest cities in this world. I believe that people from Rwanda are super excited whenever we say that Kigali is the cleanest city in Africa. But anytime it comes to the problem, everybody thinks that it's the responsibility of the government to make a city clean. But I'm here to tell you that it's not always the responsibility of a government, but you as a citizen of that particular country, it's your responsibility to make the country clean. And this is why I get super excited when I see young entrepreneurs in Africa solving problems within their community. The story that I'm going to share today is about a young Kenyan who decided to recycle plastics into bricks. This is not the first time I'm doing this story because when I was in Ghana, I saw a young guy who is recycling plastic to build affordable homes. And this is why I'm super excited today. My name is Mr. Ghana Baby. If you don't know me, now you know. Please do me a favor, subscribe and be part of this awesome family. But since the story I'm going to share is about a woman, do me a favor, like the video. Can we get 20,000 likes for this video? Because women are so special. Subscribe if you haven't. Come with me as we go talk to this woman. Aya Maya. Peace out. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Fine, thank you. It's really a pleasure meeting you. Nice to meet you. You know that you are one of the most innovative young Africans? <laughs> And everyone is telling me that I need to meet you before I leave Nairobi. Okay, you're welcome. welcome. Thank you. My name is Watermaya, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. <laughs> annoying village. A annoying village boy. Okay. Tell me something about you because everyone wants to know more. So my name is Nzambi. Okay. Nzambi Mate. Um, material scientist and engineer by background. I'm fond of Jenga makers. We make alternative building materials. Our first product line are pavers which are used in footpaths, sidewalks, garages, okay. the, the, those stones. So that's what we make from recycled waste plastic. Before we go to what you do, okay. let me know you more. You are born and raised in Nairobi? Yes, I was born and raised in... I was actually bo uh, born in the outskirts of Nairobi, towards, uh, like you're going towards the coast. Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I moved in Nairobi when I was young, so I'm more of Nairobi. You're more of um, living in Nairobi right now? Yeah. You schooled in Nairobi? Yes. You ever lived Nairobi ab to abroad? You ever lived abroad? Yes, I stayed in the U.S. for about one and a half years. One and a half years. What did you do in the U.S.? So I was studying uh, social entrepreneurship. I was in this program called Watson Institute. Um, it's in collaboration with uh, Boca Raton University in Florida. And the program, it's an acceleration program for, it's like um, uh, Olympic grounds for entrepreneurs based in Boca. And after that, you decided to return back to Yes. So before I went to the US and after my school, I, I worked a bit. I worked for like one and a half years in the national oil company here in Kenya. Mm. And then I realized I don't want, I don't, I don't like to. Work. That's just not what You're working in a national oil company. Yes. Which means an oil company pays a lot, though. Yes. It was not. Yeah. I wouldn't complain. I was comfortable. And so you quit that. Yes. Before you went to the state, or you quit that to work in your. I quit that and then started Jijenge, and then I use now the project Jijenge to move to the US. So Jijenge took you to the US. Yes. And then, what was Jijenge doing? So I was actually building a business model in the US. I was fundraising because uh, I was kind of having a challenge fundraising, especially early stage fundraising, and then also to study and to just understand what is it all about being a social entrepreneur. Yeah, but after learning how to be a social entrepreneur, why didn't you stay in the US then? That is not my purpose in life. My purpose in life is to build my own country. So that's why I came back. What inspires you to do what you do then? Um, I, every day I wake up, uh, I come do this, it, it puts a smile in my face. It seems you believe in Africa. Yes, I, I mean Africa is the last frontier of investment. If you, if you don't have investments in Africa in the next, what, 50, 100 years, you'll be, you'll be on the wrong side of investments. Can I ask you, when you hear the name Africa, what comes into your mind? Ah, potential, possibilities. Like you see, um, Americans, they have what they call the American dream. But I can promise you the African dream. Ah, oh, it's a cost to recommend. Uh, oh my god, this is the first time we are in this, so I definitely need to ask you what is the African dream there? Um the African dream is it's like uh, I've ever been like in a game, in a video game. 
and you have all these levels. All it just takes is just for you to finish one level and move to the other, and move to the other, and the other. So be one problem at a time, one problem at a time. I want to tell you that you're an inspiration. <laughs> and um, you know, like nine months ago, I heard about you. People were just sending me email. Wherever you are, you better go to Kenya and go and find her. To the extent that I even had to send my girlfriend to come here yeah. to do the video instead of me coming. Yeah. But even after my girlfriend did the video, people are saying, no, we want you to let us know the story of this amazing woman. First of all, I just want to know what is Jijenge all about? What does it mean? Because I don't speak Swahili. <laughs> it sounds like a Swahili word. Yes, it's actually a Swahili word. But the spelling is different. So the spelling is J-I. J E N G. Okay. It means build yourself. Build, build yourself. yourself. Yes. Are you a civil engineer? No, materials. Material engineer. Okay, so that is why you are recycling plastics yes. into. I mean, what is the inspiration behind this? Um, so I am. I am, as I as stated earlier, I am a firm believer in potentials and possibilities for the future. And I believe that um, the future needs to be sustainable. It needs to be sustainable, it needs to be affordable, it needs to be alternative. Alternative, affordable, sustainable. Especially when it comes to buildings. Because, you see, in, uh, especially in Kenya, the fintech, the financial uh, uh, tech space has mm -hmm. been disrupted in the most amazing way. The banking system has been disrupted. Of course, the transportation system with yeah. hailing cabs, it is it has just changed things in in position or rather in line with the fourth industrial revolution yeah the construction space is still doing the same and the mentality we have is if it's not broken why fix it but it needs we need to rethink how we build mm. because you see when it comes to mineral natural resources like the cement mm. our limestone or oil and stuff like that those materials are not infinite they are finite you just have to think okay fine what happens when it, we run out of things of this what are the alternatives and that is the future i did a video in ghana about a guy who is recycling plastics into Building. affordable like housing yeah are you looking forward apart from like the bricks that you're doing right now pavement block that you're doing right now are you looking forward for building in future yes definitely um like i would love to collaborate with him and see because he has done he has, he has gone ahead of us so we don't have to invent the wheel oh. so if you can collaborate with them then of course now i'll definitely give you his contact so that you'll be able to speak to him but can we go inside so that because i think people are really want to know what happens in there okay all right the back end of things. It's out of plastics, eh? So this is where, because we get plastics from, in fact, we have what we call the post-industrial and the post-consumer. Okay. So this is an example of post-industrial. As you can see, it's almost like the same. Mm. So this we get from factory. So this actually, this is actually an alcohol, uh, a beverage, an alcohol and uh, beverage company. Okay. So we get their waste. And then what we do is we collect bottle drops from all these bottles. And then we, we, there's a company we work with, they collect this because we don't process this. You don't process this ones? No, we don't process this. What, what, kind of, what kind of plastic do you process then? We process, this is called HDPE. So we process HDPE, we don't process, so this is the bottom top. So what PET, they, what they do, they go and make a polyester. Mm, with this? Yes, with that. Because this is a polyethylene, it makes polyester. Do you know that you are solving a problem? Yeah. What problem do you think you are solving? Um, a combination of a few plastic waste, logistic waste, uh, environmental waste, uh, uh, apparel, indirectly building. So the plastic ideally itself is not of much uh, cost. Mm. What you, what what adds the cost is the service. The service, yes. okay. In this case, the sort of service. Mm. Like you can see in this one, these are just bottle drops. Wow, that's a lot. So, these are just, so all this is what we call post-industrial, these are mm. just from factories. Mm. And then we have what's called post-consumer, so that, those ones we get from, so we have the waste pickers who mm. collect, and then they take to the yards. So what the yards do, they sort even further, because you see some are uh, soft drinks, some are cooking oil, <coughs> some are uh, uh, takeaway packages, so they sort based on the type of plastic. And then we collect from there, we bring here, because for us, uh, our business model is not the collection, our business model is the processing. <laughs> So do you, I mean, use this directly or you have to crush it? No, we have to crush. So the idea is this, this one, uh, when you put it in the extruder, mm. it takes time. 
to to melt because the idea is just melt it enough to combine with sand so you have to crush it to reduce the surface area so that the melting process is we have the crushing machine here yes so this is a uh, crusher it's under maintenance mm. so what it does it just crushes the plastic into small portions into like chips so this is an example oh. so you crush it from this size to this size oh. So that is the purpose of this. So are you going to say that these bricks are just made out of plastics only? Not plastic entirely. So this, this uh, brick is a combination of plastic and aggregate. The aggregate of this case is sand. But you can use any aggregate as long as the area, the, the, the size of the sand is What is the percentage of the sand and the plastic? So it, it changes anything from 7 to 30, 6 to 40. There are some products we make uh, 50, 50, but it doesn't work well. 60, 40 is the threshold. Wow. Yeah. So, once we get there, once we get the plastic done, so this is the plastic that has already been crushed. Mm. So, what we do is we mix here with sand, and also it has, it's at this stage, depending on the color you want to produce. Here's where you add the color pigment. You, you, you add the color pigment by yourself? Yes, let me show you an example of a color pigment. This is a green color pigment. Oh, okay. So it's more, it's just plastic pigment. So how, how, how do you add the green color? You just wear, you it's just wear and you white. Oh. <laughs> it's like, it's like oh. there's nothing extraordinary. Extraordinary. So you fit the extruder here. Um, and also depending on the type of plastic, because here we process three types of plastic. Okay. We process HDP, that's high density polyethylene, LDP, low density polyethylene. So in layman terms, HDP is like the bottle box. Mm -hmm. So this is HDP. Um, in, in layman terms, in uh, layman terms, polyethylene is it's like paper. It's so paper like. Paper like. Like you see the wrappers when you buy a, yeah. a, a, a new car. Yeah, a new yeah. Car, that wrapper. That yes, that's LDP. Okay. And then PP. So PP is mostly the kitchenware. The Tupperwares you use, uh, the food containers you use in your mic for microwave, for takeaway, for mm. that. So depending on the type of plastic you're processing, that's what the temperature will vary. I want to ask you a question. I hope you didn't build this machine yourself. No, we did everything. Yeah, we never bought a machine. We never bought even a <laughs> part outside there. You, you build the extruder? Yes, everything. Even the press. It seems like people who recycle plastics are really genius. No, it's not a, it's not a matter of genius as such. I'll say like Einstein said, everyone is a genius. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you compare a fish by its ability to climb a tree, the fish will forever live thinking it's a fish. Whereas if you put that fish in water, ah, you're not seeing it. So for me, I am in, I am a fish and I'm in water. So of course I love to say So you, I don't think you are just um, a, a material engineer. I think you are also a mechanical engineer. Yeah, so these things you learn on the way, you know. Because in, in school, of course, you learn a bit of everything. But then here you have to learn everything. You have to learn a bit of electrical, you have to learn a bit of mechanical, a bit of hydraulic. It's a mixture of everything because it's a necessity. I think you all need to share this video so that the world will hear her story because I'm amazed, you know. Now I know why everybody wanted me to see you because this is incredible. So from here, what happened next? So from here, the next stage is here. So this is the, this is the molten form when the plastic is mixed with sand. It's definitely hot. Yes. Uh, it's about 300 to 400 degrees centigrade. So I would then advise you that you. So this is uh, what uh, in materials we call polymer co uh, concrete. So this, the cement we use for building is called Portland. Concrete. Okay. So this one is called polymer concrete. So if you take now this mixture, then you feed it here. So like this is an example. So this one is waiting in line to be to be feed into a mold. So maybe I can show you. So this mold brings the. And, and that, and that. This mold brings the shape of the bricks. Yes, so this is actually the mold. So the whole thing here, this is called a hydraulic press. Hmm. And as the name suggests, it's what is just a press. Um, and then here we have the mold. Now here is where it's like making cookies. Hmm. You use the same oven to make uh, cookies, you use the same oven to make cakes. So what you just change is just a mold. So this is what we change. How many, how many bricks do you produce in a day? So in a day we produce about 1,000-1,500 a day. This one has a capacity of producing 9 every 3 minutes. 
see, I, I definitely have to ask you this question here. Yeah. I mean, this factory lo looks so huge. Definitely somebody will, might be thinking that, did you just wake up and build this factory or you started from somewhere? Ah, no. <laughs> so like the interview truth yeah. was in, in our small factory. So we started, actually I started at home, behind my mom's backyard. That was in 2017. The whole 2017, 2018, I was running on my mom's backyard. And then when I went back, when I went to the US, when I came back, I couldn't continue working in my mom's backyard because this is an industrial um, setup. Yeah. You cannot put it in residential. So I had to move now to the industry. Are people not complain that you are doing that in your mom's background? Of course they complain, but I told them I, I just want one year. If you can give me just one year to figure myself out, I'll move. So I had really good neighbors. How proud does your neighbors feel right now seeing where you become? Uh, so I have, I have one particular one who's very happy because the machines are making so much noise for her. <laughs> so she's really happy. <laughs> We know that this is made in Africa yes. and this is something new in the industry. Are they willing to accept that, okay, you know, this is made out of plastic, do we trust it, do we have to buy? Uh -huh. You know, so who are the people that believed uh, in, the in, in the product that you're doing and who are the people that are embracing it right now? That's what. Ah, okay. So we have two categories. We have what's called the B2C, the business to customer category, mm. and then we have the business to business. Um, we are really fortunate enough because here in Kenya, people are very aware when it comes to environmental matters. It's, it's almost like it's ingrained in our, in our subconscious. Because if you can see, when it comes to plastic regula regulations, Kenya has one of the har harshest ones when it comes to pollution in plastic. Because it's, it's, it's something within the culture. So when we, when we launched a product and said, okay, fine, we are taking the plastic waste and we are making building blocks. Let me summarize, our biggest problem is not demand. Our biggest problem is supply. Your biggest supply? Yes, we have more demand than the supply. Like right now we're in October, but we have orders scheduled all the way to February. No, no, I think we, we need to clap for Kenyans <laughs> for embracing it. Because from where I'm from, the, the guys were really struggling in terms of um, the people embracing That's what I asked you the question, are people really patronizing it? Because the fact that it's made out of plastic, you normally ask the question like, is it durable? Yes. yes. Of course, there are those questions that you have to answer the, 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 the client. For example, it's plastic, of course, the question will be what happens if uh, fire. fire. So then, then you come and say, okay, fine, that's where the sand element comes in. Because the sand becomes, um, if you can remember your basic physics, Impurities increase the melting point mm. and lower the, boil, the boiling, boiling point. point yeah. In this case, the sand is an impurity to plastic. So this plastic in its uh, normal state, without any impurity, melts between 125 to about 250. Mm. But when you add sand, the melting point rises to about 300 to 400. So by that time, as we human beings, we don't be existing. By the mm. time we reach those temperatures. So that's the first guarantee. Oh, wow. So as you can see, we remove nine every three minutes. Some are stuck up there, some are there coming out now. So the idea of this one is not only to shape it, but also to bring the temperature even down. As I told you, the temperature comes at 400 but, degrees. Yeah. So here it's dropped to about 100. And then from here, we go to the next step. So when it comes from here, like the, this big, they are about maybe 100 to 70 degrees centigrade. Mm. Still hot. So we don't put them here so that they can be cool to room temperature. Oh, okay. So this is just normal. Water. So the water is still hot. Yes, the water is because it, it, it just to 25. And then this is the finishing bit. So because we were making the machines, especially the first one we did, this one, this was actually version 2. Okay. This was version 1, we have stopped it because you need to revamp it. So for this version 2, because we were learning on the process, we, mm. we quite didn't figure a lot of things out. When it comes to mold, we 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 lost precision by almost 0.5 millimeters. So that's why we have to put this step. So this step is the finishing. So this is Lewis. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's also a genius when it comes to materials and renew, renewable uh, products. So this is the final product. Yes, yeah, that's the final product. So are you sure this will not break? Try and break here. I oh no, I, I can definitely break. How much are you gonna give me for breaking this? No problem. Huh? To break. No, no, <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna break it because because a break will definitely break. No, 
Look to be that crack. One more time. No, no, that's a lie. Hey! She's sorry, man. I'm so sorry. What? There's a, there's a scientific explanation behind that. And what is the scientific explanation? So, when the plastic comes from, uh, when the mixture comes from the mold, it's hot. And then plastic is polymerous, string-like in nature. So when you compress it at very high temperature pressure points, you release all the air pockets. The air pockets make it uh, brittle. So without air pockets, it's less brittle. So it doesn't break. So that's what makes concrete break. Which means this is stronger than concrete. Yes, three to seven times. How many people are working in here? So the whole team in production is 20. We have site team which is about 10. And then we have the plastic collection in general about 100. So you train all the workers here by yourself? Yes, yes. Because you know this thing, like the machines we build, so ideally speaking we are the ones who train. So when we bring someone in, we do all the training and then the idea is we want to, to replicate the solution. My goal and prayer is to never export. Never export. The brief. Not even a single brick should come out of there. What I want to leave is the solution. Because in Ghana you have a plastic problem, in Kenya we have plastic problem, in Tanzania, in Uganda. So let's put the solution to Tanzania. Let's build the solution in Uganda. All the way so are you willing to train people from other countries? Yes, that's the future. I mean, uh, what is the biggest project you've ever done with? Um, um, so the I think the first one we will do because we are currently in the process is by the government. So we are really fortunate enough to say the government is one of our customers. As I told you, the, the Kenyan space when it comes to uh, materials, uh, eco-friendly materials, it's very receptive. So the Kenyan government are doing a project, it's a, uh, like a, a road, a main road, now the footpaths hmm. to the institute. Yeah. You know, I nearly asked you, is the government supporting your work? But since you said the government give give you a project I believe that he's supporting. Yes, so they actually buy and they also support us financially. You know, we have so many Africans that are watching us. If you have a message for Africans watching us, what would that message be? Um, I think it's time we position ourselves and start building ourselves for the fourth industrial revolution. Because I get the feeling that that is like uh, the, the coming out um, opportunity for Africans. And uh, whether it's in, like uh, in our system right now, we're in the process of automating it. One mm. IoT system. Mm. Because once we, we did the IoT system, then we have the data, mm -hmm. and then we put AI systems. So it's just, it's just like a, a necessity to which we have to move to the next. Level. So let us do it. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? So we want to be a building solutions um, expert, both from the financials to the materials to the construction. What has been the major challenge establishing this year in Kenya? Um, I think we spend a lot of time and uh, money on research and development. And uh, unfortunately in Kenya, most, most, not even just in Kenya, in Africa, we don't have tendencies of funding R&D. That's why we just partner and multiply as we wait for solutions from Europe and America to, or China to just replicate them. But it's time we start doing R&D in-house. Because it's one way to get a solution, which sometimes it can be plug and play, sometimes it just doesn't work. So I think that was our biggest challenge. But it also, it's like school. You don't complain paying school fees because you get something at the end of it. I, I have a lot of Africans or Kenyans who are willing to support what you do, right? Is there any way they can reach out to you for you to, I mean, lay bricks in their houses or anywhere? Is, is it allowed or you have a lot of um, orders already? No, we're in business. The idea is the more they make. How do they reach out to you? So we have, in all our social media platforms, we have the number, and also in our website we have the number. Um, to just say it, it's uh, plus 254 for those who are not in Kenya. For those who are in Kenya, it's 0703 289 506, I'll give you. And it's by force for you to reach out to her. If you have a chance to change one kid in Africa, uh, what would that be? Mentality. Why? I get the feeling in Africa we have... Um, the neocolonialism, the colonialism and the neocolonialism has sadly crept into our mentality. It's time we... I want to say thank you so much for talking to me and I really appreciate the time and wish you all the best. Thank you so much and have a good day. Thank you. I just want to know, are there a group of students? Yes, so these are what, students. What are, what are they coming to do here? Um, so I think I will, they'll tell me exactly what they, they want, but uh, what we are willing to show them is the whole process. 
Uh, just to give them a background of what to do, how we do it, and why we do it. Because I get the feeling why is also very important. Uh, are you not tra doing transfer of knowledge to them? You don't think so that's... This is the first one. This is the first one. Oh, this is the first ever? Yes. Welcome. <laughs> and I hope um, you will help eradicate plastics from Nairobi. You know, Nairobi is not even top five cleanest cities in Africa. And I believe that having you in here, if you transfer your knowledge to all these people, yes. Nairobi will be the cleanest city in the world. You don't think so? Inshallah. <laughs> yeah, we have to do multiple Yeah. But how, how are you giving back to the society? Um, so we have different forms. Because um, other than information, there is the element of um, actually putting this product in where people can't afford it. So like we have done a community school, so there's a community school we collaborate where we have paved 101 square meters wow. and we're looking to pave the last 300. So how we've done it is we got a grant from the government to pave that. Uh, hey, the Kenyan government is really trying, you know. Hey, hey let, let, let me, no, a, a round of applause for the Kenyan government. Can you help me clap for the Kenyan government? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.